Yeah. So, uh, maybe we'll just play a song. Yeah. Uh, for, from when we played last night or something like that. Cool. Um, cool. That's pretty good. Yeah. Um,
Marcus. Marcus. And Rich, I know. And Dan. And what are you guys' name? Raul. Say one more time. Raul. Raul, okay. Diego. Diego, okay, cool. Um, great. So um, we can um, you know, just dive in and, and talk about anything you guys would like to. Um, that's like a, a song that I wrote a, a long time ago. Um, So sort of, it's just kind of a simple and free to um, really just kind of is focused around this one repeating kind of melodic figure and then it just sort of goes from that. Um, and what I'm trying to do in, uh, in that situation, or really when I play any music, is just to try to be aware of playing um, with, you know, as strong of a... Um, sound and my dynamics and, and, um, and uh, my and my rhythmic rate. So that's like really what I'm kind of focused on um, as like a bass level and I kind of work out from there. So, but um, yeah, uh, you know, we're here for you guys and so we can really just talk about whatever whatever you'd like and, you know, um, I know a couple of you were at the show last night and, um, and if, you want, if you have any questions about that or you want to talk about other stuff. Encourage you guys though to please ask as many questions, or you know, if you brought an instrument you want to play, or you want to play my instrument, um, or you want to go out there and borrow one from one of these guys um, and get a chance to play with uh, these two, you know, and just kind of like get some feedback from them as well about like what it feels like to sort of um, uh, to play um, with, with. I mean, these guys are so good, you know. It's like it's sort of a nice, it's a nice thing to be able to get to just play with um, to play with. Um, like a rhythm section that's that supportive, and so um, that can be a pretty serious learning experience in in of itself. And so if I, I would encourage you guys and welcome you to come up and, and you know play and gives us some kind of some topical stuff. You know, I don't want to just talk to that for an hour. You know, so does anybody have any have any questions or anything that they want want to discuss or talk about? Or Well, for, sorry, Go first ahead. off, I'm, I'm not a musician, so um, you were kind enough to invite everybody who was oh at yeah. the gig yesterday, oh so yeah. I just thought I'd come along. And what I really was um, interested in is the fact that I think that the, the CD, the last CD you made, it, it sounds like there was a lot of thought going into the whole sound. It's like the whole thing is a unique, like sound design behind it. Mm -hmm. So it's just wondering how you pre came up with it? Is it is it like a logical development of what you did before or is it more like in an in external influence as well? How do you develop such a sound? It's very unique, so I was just wondering. Yeah. Well um so for 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 that album like the way that um that I think that I conceived of it and um and that uh, Eric and I worked on it was was um it was Specific in, in, in that, like we knew um, that we were sort of trying to like distill certain feelings that we got from other from from other people's music that we like really connected with and that we really liked, um, and we knew what we wanted to not do. You know, we knew what, like what we wanted to avoid in certain ways, um, and from uh, and we kind of were working from that as 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 like a ground zero and building up from that place, um, sort of not entirely aware of what we necessarily wanted it to sound like, but but we had these sort of um, gui like guiding lights or these sort of like North Stars that we were trying to kind of uh, make sure that we were, you know, continuing continuing to like set our compass to and then, and then you know, we kind of felt like we were veering away from that and kind of focus back in on that and try to get into it. And so for me, I mean, I um, like, I th and I think I can speak for these guys too, I mean like, I think that you know, we're collectively like, you know, I, I, I sort of found myself drawn to music that is sort of in the, in the cracks in terms of, um, uh, and, and, I, and, I, and what I mean when I say that is, is music and records and artists that don't, they really don't fit squarely within a particular idiom or, or genre, you know, um, because that's just the most exciting stuff to me. Um, so what this, I guess the, some, of, some of the things that I was thinking about um, when we were like, making this album or like um, you know 
I, I think that as an instrumental musician, like I, I really want to sort of be able to like distill and think about and, and be able to kind of somehow translate um, what it is about like singers that I love and 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 you know and like and and bands that I love like. I was listening to like a ton, of, a ton of. There's this one Eddie Lou Harris album that I that I just had on, on in, like co constant repeat, um, and and another and a Neil Young record that I just had like spinning nonstop when I was uh, working on this album. And also I was touring this record with Esperanza Spalding that was like just a guitar trio and then her singing and like so I was just like, you know, felt like really really like I just wanted like there's just something about the voice you know that is like. It's just so captivating, and like there's a feeling that I get from listening to great singers that I don't get from. It's really hard to get from instrumental music, and so, you know, um, I, I think it's you know part of it is just doing my my best at like trying to distill what what it is about that those records or those musicians that I really connect with, um, and that sound, and trying to like somehow find some of some of that um, that that feeling in. in what I to what I do, and like rather than sort of just changing course and going like you know what I'm not going to improvise on guitar anymore. Or play, I'm just going to I'm going to start taking singing lessons myself, and right, you know what I mean. And just sort of try to start like and do like a rock. Like I'm just going to start a new band and just do that. Um, and not that there'd be anything wrong with that, but for me, I really just wanted to like try to um, think about like well, what is it about that stuff, you know? And and and, and I, let me just continue to, to sort of attempt to bring that into, you know, into, into my musical world through, through the prism, you know, of the music that we're making. So definitely um, that and like the simplicity of that music, you know, and then also um, in terms of just the, the, like the sonic stuff, you know, um, I, it's like in like the jazz world, you know, that's sort of the only uh, world usually that I've existed in that doesn't have you know, we're really like um, records are made by sort of just putting up some microphones and uh, and ca and capturing what we hope is a great live performance, right? And then that's sort of where it, where it begins and ends. But um, you know, working on other kinds of records and and thinking about well, what what else is it about this music that I love so much? And you and you know, people are spending days, weeks, months, years sometimes making these like sculpting these songs, you know, and like and. Um, you know, Zach's an engineer, and, and, and we're, and Eric is as well, and like, we're always, you know, sort of thinking about and aware of the fact that like, um, like something that's really beautifully recorded and sculpted and like thought of and conceived of is, can be so impactful, you know, and, and, and a really great performance that's sort of not recorded well um, can really be squashed, I think, you know. Um, but, um, yeah, like in terms of just sort of a lot of that, that brilliant, that, that sort of that world. I mean, like I've been influenced a lot by guys like Daniel Lanois and um, and uh, um, you know Brian Eno and things like that. And just the fact that like when you listen to that music, you feel like you're like kind of walking into a room and you're completely enveloped by something, you know. And um, rather than rather than like listening to like you know um, a record where sometimes you know things just kind of feel like they're all in a straight line and you're just kind of looking at them, you know, and, and, and it's all hitting you in the same in the same way and in the same, at the same, you know, in the same distance and stuff like that. So, like, thinking about, like, the, the stereo field of, a, of an album, like, like, like a room, you know, and then, like, and then decorating that room, you know, like, and taking all these different elements and, like, um, these different sounds and kind of, like, hanging one in that corner and then putting one on the wall over there, you know, and, and, and then thinking about at, at what height and stuff like that, rather than just kind of, like, thinking about just, a, like, you know, Want a single like one canvas in front of you, and then just filling that one thing in, you know. But rather like, yeah, just thinking about it as like a a, a space that's like 360 degrees. You know? um, I don't know, but but there, you know, we worked on that so tirelessly together for. So I don't know what were you thinking about when we were doing that stuff. Uh, <coughs> yeah. Well, I think it's it's different than the first album we made with Matt it, in that way that you're describing. Mm -hmm. that there's a bunch of instruments and sounds on it that just are not instruments or sounds that were played live, you know, so uh, uh, when we make, when we started, we have like a little studio in Brooklyn, and we got it, but kind of, uh, we got it up and running more once this album was being made, so it kind of gave us a little bit more freedom to 
do studio work, stuff where we can go in and say, like, we have a little mixing board and some mics and stuff like that. So we, we're, we can go in and, and say, why don't we just try to find interesting sounds and, s and record them and print them and then make a demo that uses those sounds and then use that as an inspiration for where a song is going to go rather than, well, there's a lead sheet that has all the music on it and that's then we're going to improvise around it and it's the only, uh, all the responsibility for making the song happen is in our instruments that we play live. That's still maybe 75% or 80 or maybe more percent of the, pr of, of the responsibility for that this album that made the music happen or not happen, but then there was this other stuff that was helping us along as far as just being inspired to create the way it sounded and that we came a lot from when we started working on it I was you know it's nothing new in the world of music but for me it was new the, the idea of sampling sounds was I got this little sampler that you can fit in a you know backpack so I would just always have that with me and then I, I would sample mass guitar a lot you know he would play stuff on the guitar that was for a song that so the harmony of the song was already in there but then I would just record on the sampler and start to cut it up and make it sound backwards, make it sound strange, make it sound like a totally other instrument, and then we would get inspired in that way by, you know, one of the songs on the album is just samples of Matt improvising, and then we chop them all up and we made melodies out of those, and we still play that live, so it's cool to kind of, uh, s you know, start from a different uh, point and have a different process. But I was listening a lot to like really early sample stuff, uh, really early like tape loops, like Steve Reich's early tape loops, where he would just have one person talking, and he would run the tapes at different speeds, and suddenly the person's voice is multiplying over itself and creating little harmonies within itself. I found that I still find that stuff so fascinating. How music can come out of a totally different medium, you know? How and it just was, still blows my mind to listen to that stuff. And um, yeah. And like Matt said, Dan, Daniel Lenoir is like a master sampler. Um, he uses, you know, a lot, a lot cooler and more uh, analog gear, and, and a lot, and a lot he's, he's a lot more master of the studio than I'll ever be. But it was inspiring to listen to people that use samples for me. That it was just a different way of thinking about making a record, and the music was already kind of going in a direction where it would lend itself to maybe a little bit more experimentation with the sound and how we would, you know. Um, make the record as far as just the process of recording it. You know, we went into it um, by uh, recording stuff ahead of time, and then that was there already when we went into the studio, which is not a really not a jazz a jazz approach typically to have stuff already recorded that you're recording with. So that was it was a challenge too, but it, it worked out. And then some of that went away, some of it stayed there. But it just all all those ideas contributed to it sounding like you said just something where the, we were paying more attention to the sounds. On some songs, there's no solos, no guitar solos, no solos of any kind. Some of the songs are just sort of just beats. All with your I favorite song. What's that? All your favorite songs. I know. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, 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 no, it's just, you know, I think when everybody that's a musician knows that as well, soon as you're sort of in some sort of zone of what you're expecting yourself to do, then you, it's easy to sort of, no matter how good you are, no matter how much experience you've had, it's easy to sort of be like, oh yeah, there I go doing that thing I do again. And then if you have these other means of looking at music or looking at just stuff from a different angle, all of a sudden you feel like you have a new lease on how you can create and how you can write or whatever it is that you're doing. So that was kind of, I think, what led us to, for, to it sounding different. It was, we wanted it to sound different, but also it was just a new process of making music. of like it's sort of like just to circle back to the very first thing like it's sort of like taking I, I don't know I think we were like I remember talking to you going like all right so you know how do we take the feeling that we get when we listen to Harvest you know what I mean and then and then sort of combine that with like you know the spontaneity of like some of you know our favorite Wayne Shorter recordings and then like the, and then and then um, while like you know including the studio is like a, or thinking of the studio as an instrument in a way that someone like Daniel and Wa does and like all that stuff is just stuff that moves us so so deeply, and like, you know, how are we going to do that? And and um, but not but trying to not do it in a clumsy way, you know, like trying to do it in a in a in a way where you just kind of trust that those things are going to work the, the work themselves into the music that you're making. Um, 
And then I think that like, you know, we share like uh, just sort of like some overarching kind of things that like and also looking for the similarities in the music. Like like so the, the things that we that I think that we love about that music and what we want to just be uh, present in our music is just like a deep sense of, of rhythm and, and feel, you know? Um, and so that's obviously applicable to to whatever it is that you're doing. <laughs> <laughs> Very comprehensive, thanks. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Anyways, did you guys have a question? Oh, okay. <laughs> <laughs> I thought you did. Yeah. Sorry, I thought you had a question. I, 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 yeah. uh, I have one, a follow up question. Or it, what attracted me to your music was the, the whole incorporation of uh, like the electronics and the soundscaping and stuff like that. But you um, made it so that you can do it in a live setting as well. As you said Daniel Lenoir uses more. Um, what do you call it? Analog gear. Sounds like me, yeah. yeah. He, he uses Pro Tools Live, so I mean. Uh, it's, oh, okay. It's, it's, it's yeah. Sorry, you can finish your question. Though. No, I'm just wondering. I, I, I was because there's always a, a negative vibe going on when it comes down to electronical music or incorporating it into a live set. Yeah. I, so think it, I think it has to do so much with like just how you approach it. You know what I mean? Like yeah. It, like, like, like anything else in, in, in music, you know? Like I. Does it, yeah, it's, it's, we're still trying to figure that out, right? Yeah, it's something that I'm battling when I, when we do this gig, because I, I feel like the sounds are a part of the music, mm -hmm. and if they're gone, it's like a different band for mm -hmm. me, so it's, but I'm battling it because, you know, all my favorite people that do it, you know, they do it in all the different types of ways, most of them are, are not playing drums while they do it. Okay. You know, yeah. or, or guitar or bass. Yeah. Most of them are, are just playing electronic. So the instrument is, they're playing the instrument and that's that's it. They're playing a, a sampler or they're playing a, you know, uh, whatever it is they're, they're using Ableton or whatever yeah. it is that they're that they're using or they're playing an NPC. Like, there's a whole lineage of all these different schools of how to play electronic music live. But there's not a lot of it where you're doing it while just playing with the band at the very same because, time, yeah. unless you're playing to a track, which doesn't excite me a lot to yeah. play to a backing track. Um, so we're trying to figure out the cool thing about the program, Ableton, that we're using is that it doesn't have to uh, just be a track, meaning that it doesn't have to be a linear, you know, when you've got GarageBand, I, mean, I don't know how much you guys know about this stuff, but it doesn't have to be, you know, you have GarageBand, you have your timeline, yeah. and your music goes from left to right, and you can loop something, but uh, as far as you know, um, yeah, things know. being kind of really open to going back, forward, this way, that way, mixing these two sounds with these two sounds, it's, this program is a little more interesting for that in that you can kind of uh, hit a little controller and then all of a sudden I'll, I, we're open for a while and I can hit a little controller and all of a sudden this sound comes up and you can hit another controller or turn a knob and the sound sounds different or strange. So it's just a, but, like you know, we're all just play. We're players first, and yeah. and we're just uh, trying to figure out. How I'm trying to figure out with these guys how to <laughs> how to make it as spontaneous as possible. Because I think what we all like, you know, we like spontaneous music with jazz musicians, you know, or uh, come from jazz. So you know, I think what excites us is probably what excites a lot of you guys is like the idea that things are not always the same. You know, mm -hmm. if you go to see a show people are playing on stage and it sounds a little different than the record, like that's usually cool, like oh they did that, oh they're going there now, like that's cool, like, that, those things excite me a lot, so I wouldn't want to go to see a show and it's not exactly like a record, and I wouldn't want to see necessarily just a track playing, someone taking a drum solo over it, and it starts to feel like play along kind of mm -hmm. culture, which is something that me personally, maybe it's because of just my angle in music, I'm not as interested in, so I'm just trying to figure out trying to figure out how to keep it as spontaneous as possible, but... Uh, You'll be able to incorporate all that. Yeah, and, and a lot of that just comes down to learning uh, Ableton as yeah. a new instrument, because it's an instrument, and it, you know, it's like, it has so many possibilities, it's just like, it can be just like sitting in front of a mixing board, and like being like a dub mixer, you know, it can yeah. be any number of things, like being a DJ, it can be like any number of things, it's as open as you want it to be, and as skilled as you are, which I'm really new to it, so I... There's every night there's something I do wrong on it. You know what I mean? Every night there's some misfiring where these guys look around and they're like, why is that sound going? You know? <laughs> you know? But I, I mean, usually it's small enough that nobody, nobody else knows. 
but we know, yeah. you know, or like I'll hit a pad that's supposed to make something turn on and the pad is unplugged or something. But you know what I mean? There's like always something. I'm just trying to learn how to do it. And the, the challenging part is learning how to do it and being completely emotionally and sort of intellectually invested in the drums at the same time, you know, because that's the hard thing to me. Because the drummer, you know, is, is dictating so much about what's going to happen in the music. So if my mind is going like, oh, I really hope that that, that click is going to play when I want it to play, it's just like, this is suddenly kind of like, you know, going on autopilot, and that's not good. But I, to answer your question in a roundabout way, I love that stuff enough and how it turned out on Matt's record and how, you know, his tunes were able to really come to life with some with some of this stuff integrated into it. I, I, I love it enough that I'm going to work on it and, and keep it going because I think it, it, it for me, it makes it interesting. For me, it does well. Cool. And I guess for it's tricky, man. It's also like the, the difficulty of like, because we've been playing like so many different, you know, like we're you know we're not like a big famous band you know, yet. But I mean, like, but, uh, <laughs> yeah. but I mean, you know, but so so yeah, yeah, yeah. Exactly. But uh, so we so we play in all these different sized rooms and all kinds of places, and it's like, and they're so different, like you know, like like, but, like mixing this stuff, you know, is just like can be really really crazy, you know, like. Um, uh, and and that's like a pretty steep learning learning curve for us too. And it's like well, it also helps. Like Zach is yeah. is a legitimate uh, recording engineer in New York who works in his own studio. He's not just a bass player. Um, or a bass. What's that? He's not, <laughs> he's not just a bass <laughs> but uh, and you know I'm sure he would have some stuff to add on this from his perspective because like I just took this stuff on as part of this record and it's been branched out to me being like just interested in doing it on my own. You know now. Some bands and try to get that happening, you know, like try to learn more, or I'll, you know, make little sampling loops and just getting this music in a different route. But Zach is, um, has worked in studios his, most of his life. So when we get on stage somewhere and we're like, holy shit, this isn't working, there's a million cables. Like, why, is, <laughs> why are we not hearing this? Or why does it sound so bad in the house? We're like, okay, just hold on a second, you know, you're routing this wrong, or, you know, this, you know, you game stage it wrong, so that's why you're clipping here, or he'll go out like the other night at Ronnie Scott's and help the front of house engineer try and figure out why that he couldn't route uh, my mix back to my ears. Yeah. And you know, Zach will go out and so it's I don't know, whenever I do a whenever I do a <laughs> whenever I am in a situation like this with people that are like like just interested in music or questions or anything like that, I'm always just like uh, oh a anybody that can go and learn how to do something in the world of production that is not just playing an instrument, mm -hmm. if you have time or any interest in it, it's so valuable, not just for yourself and the enrichment of you kind of learning how all these things are working, even at a basic level, um, which I think that I'm just, just approaching a basic level of that side of it, but to uh, make yourself valuable in the world of music, which is, I think, sort of increasingly um, less, uh, you know, uh, merciful on people. That just do that just exist in one tiny space as a specialist. You know, I mean, it, it's I don't know. It's just, at least that's my experience living in New York and seeing how things are going down. Like so many people, you know, like our, our, our friend Nate Wood, for example, the great drummer who plays with the band Knee Body. I mean, uh, that's wow. a guy that never has to worry about his career because he's an incredible drummer, one of the best in the world. And he's he sings, he plays guitar, he plays bass. He does it all at the same time, and he masters records every single day. So, and he could mix them, but he chooses not to. So it's yeah, like, yeah, he want to do you know, anymore. it's the kind of person that makes you angry, but also it's very inspiring because you say, this guy has a total life in music laid out for him because he's, he's, he's truly invested in the way the whole music is working. And that's inspiring to see, you know, and it's something that. So you're saying it, it makes you look to, uh, to music from a different pr perspective as well? Definitely. Broader. Definitely. In Definitely. That sense. As soon as we started, as soon as I started doing any sort of like production on this record, I started to understand that uh, you immediately are just, because I think when you're instrument centric, whenever you go back into playback, you're listening back to, well, how was my performance, you know? Mm -hmm. And if you feel good about your performance, you're like, I think this is the take, you know? Yeah, <laughs> it's right, like, right. It's easy to go down that road, like listening back to the band, and you're like, oh, the drums sound really good on this, sweet solo. <laughs> I, guys, this is the one, right? You know? You, and I think it just changes the more you, and even just learning some basic piano, 
that's what stuff for me is. It's like totally changed how I think yeah. about stuff. Right? It's empowering, right? I think it's, yeah, it's empowering. Yeah. It's empowering to learn piano late in life. <laughs> 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 yeah, I guess like because we did on that we did one song in its entirety, and then we just did one for our our publisher that just came out, which is a, like a couple days ago, which is a cover of uh, of this of this ger of this old eighties German band called Alpha Bill. We did this tune. It, it was it was really weird. That's another story. But anyways, <laughs> but we did a but we but we recorded it in, it in its entirety. Eric engineered it in its entirety in this little studio that's about you know this size or two thirds of the size that we have, and and to just sort of be able and and if you just heard it, you would go, oh, it sounds that sounds good, you know, like that, and, and to be able to be self sufficient in that way, um, as so many. Um, so many bands are, are like are becoming increasingly so it's just like wow yeah you just want to like you can just feel like you can put out music all the time you know it's like that's it's really empowering you know? so i just have to make sure that i keep being you know close friends with guys who know way more about recording than i do you know? that always helps yeah, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> you know it yeah. might be the best way to go yeah right exactly do you work in do you work in ableton as well yeah 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 you do yeah. yeah do you have a band well, it's just me. It's just yeah, Ableton. Cool. Yeah, yeah. No, that's cool. So, right. Yeah. So this is my. Th I keep trying to learn from people like you who are just who are just you just see them playing a whole set of music, just with their controllers and their computer. Yeah. And that's the that's the challenge. Is like trying to get to the point where you can still be spontaneous, still be playing an instrument. And, uh, playing yeah. I, I learned maybe from Ableton. You don't have to be a virtuoso on any instrument to make music or be creative in some way. But it's, it's no different in, in a way, you know, like, um, uh, than like how the, like how guitars were just like so ubiquitous, you know, um, you know, at, like when in every single department store in the U.S., you know, you can buy yourself a guitar for 40 bucks. And, and it's, it, um, and everybody was just, you didn't have to be a virtuoso on guitar either to, to write great songs and to make really great music. It was just like, that was what was really widely available to you. And that you know every kid in, in you know, all over the world was getting for Christmas, and that was the tool that they had. And so, in a sense, like you know, the fact that I mean, the fact that you know every single kid is loaded up with GarageBand, you know, and whether they want to be or not, is really no different in a lot of ways than being handed you know yeah. a guitar that way. It's just sort of like it's like a it's almost like a yeah, it's like a folk instrument in that in that regard. You know, it's just sort of like what is everywhere and, and available to people. You know? yeah. Also electronic. <laughs> markets of music that, that, that exist in their own world that's a giant sort of thing. Yeah. And what's your band? What's your, where, do you, where do you go by? What's your uh, no, I just produce music for... Um, I'm a designer and filmmaker. Cool. So I make animations and films cool. for clients. Cool. Uh, for government or whatever. And I just make my own music. Go with them. Oh, cool. So it's usually no longer than uh, like a two minute set. Cool. Um, any uh, like guitar related questions? Yeah, we make we make a guitar. Um, a, a, a gentleman from South Korea named Young Jun, uh, and uh, he he's just like this kind of mad scientist who's obsessed with. Um, replicating like uh, early 60s era, like specifically like 61 to 64 or something like that. It's like, a really weird thing to spec, you know? Like it's like, um, and it has all these, you know, and, and, and I've only met him once, but at the time that I did, he just sort of pointed out all these different elements of the guitar that I wasn't aware of. He was like, how do you like the bone nut? And I was like, I had no idea that was a bone nut, but I like it a lot, you know, it's great. So th things like that. Um, but uh, yeah, they're cool. You know, the, they're sort of, they've become kind of like plastered all over in, like New York, because I, I, this guy he must be independently wealthy or something like that, because he's just sort of making instruments like you know by the dozens and giving them to people, which is pretty cool. So the first guy that I knew who was playing them uh, was Tim LaFave, you know, the bass player, and uh, and then he just started being like, 
oh yeah, bro, like you should just send my send my buddy Matt a guitar. You know, like it was like, oh okay, cool. And so and they would just start sending you know, all, and then it became this thing where like it kind of. And then, I, you know, all you have to do is ask. So, you know, I said, hey, can you send my bass player a bass? And I go, yeah, sure. So it's just gotten to be this crazy thing, you know? Uh, pretty yeah. amazing. Yeah, pretty, and, and they're cool, you know? And it's sort of just, I guess, like a parts telly, you know? And I, yeah, and, um, yeah, I, I don't know. It's a, it's a really, like, different experience than playing, uh, you know, a semi-hollow body guitar or something like that. And I found myself being, like, increasingly like wanting to go really extreme in one direction or the other, like um, and, and when when playing like an acoustic or an electric instrument, you know, and be playing like either like a like a re like just a full on electric solo body guitar or just a flat top steel string guitar, you know. Um, and uh, I was sort of getting frustrated with like the in between thing, you know. But yeah, do you want do you want to play it? Sure. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Um, how about anybody else? What anything about like practicing stuff or like any I mean you can get as dirty as you want or we can just keep talking about <laughs> records which is fine with you too, you know? Yeah. I'm I'm a complete beginner guitar, so I'm not sensual to ask her some technical things, but if you would show something about improvisation and how you do it in a way that's interesting to you to show us? Sure. Would be great. Yeah, sure. Yeah. Absolutely. How does it feel? Wow, it feels really nice. Yeah, good. <laughs> yeah. What do you think, man? Yeah, uh, oh, he'll send you one, man. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I'll get you all one. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's, the, that's, the, that's the party favor for uh, yeah. for the for coming to the workshop. Everybody gets a tally. Yeah. <laughs> look under your chair. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Just look under your chair. Like <laughs> Oprah. <laughs> that's right. Yeah. Yeah. It's really well done. Yeah. Yeah, it's cool. Is it the t uh, tender neck as well? Or um, I think just it's. I don't know. To be honest. <laughs> Yeah, wow. um, but it's cool. I mean, so in terms of just like uh, like uh, we were talking about this the other day. Like, it, what's interesting about it, it's kind of like a double-edged sword about guitar is like if you haven't spent any time playing classical guitar, which I mm -hmm. haven't, uh, um, there's no um, there's no like canon in terms of how how it's taught. You know, like in terms of how you sort of begin on the instrument and then kind of work your way up from there, right? Or work your way out and sort of build tools to, to improvise and, and just to be clear when I'm talking about improvising in like just to set like the parameter for like what I'm talking about in this I mean like playing lines over chord changes you know mm -hmm. what I mean that, that kind of thing so um, uh, there's not yeah there's not like a um, uh, like a really deep metho methodology that's mm -hmm. taught for guitar and that sort of mm -hmm. is really interesting and cool in lots of ways because on one hand it like gets people to do things really differently, um, which I think is great, right? And so you get these like, you know, wildly different approaches to playing. Um, and if, I mean, if, 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 even if you look at just like, the, you know, the big three, like like Frizzell and Matheny and Schofield, they all play so radically different from one another, you know? And, and, and I think that that's in like no small part due to the fact that um, the guitar is like just such a choose your own adventure kind of thing, you know? People just like, you know, you get it, and then you can kind of, you know, just do a few things quick, and then where you want to go from there is, is, is entirely up to you. Um, so, something that like, um, like helped me a lot, just in terms of like building tools to to play over harmony, was just learning, um, just learning like um, what makes up that harmony, and then how to play that on the neck. You know, and so. Um, you know, there's a lot of like stuff that you get bogged down in on, on guitar, like people talking about like mo and modes and like chord scales and this kind of, this kind of stuff that that I, I feel like is just kind of like uh, it's it's like unnecessary language, you know, mm -hmm. and it's kind of unnecessary. It's an unnecessary way of like um, um, of compartmentalizing things that really are one just one big picture, you know. So if you think about um, you know, we're taught that there are like triads and four part chords, and then there's like, you know, uh, so you have triads and you have seventh chords, and you have the upper extensions of those seventh chords, and they, you know, and really, um, to me, 
it's just one there it's one sound do you know what i mean there are just like there uh, like a chord is seven notes you know um and you're and you're either playing uh, and if you're playing a voicing for that chord it's whatever combination of those notes you you know make sense in the moment to play or that you want to express and if you're playing um or if you want to play a melodic line that relates to that chord change you know uh, or that brings up the sound of that chord change then you play melodically instead of harmonically you know, just being this one note uh, uh, versus two or more notes so like uh, when you start talking about that stuff it's easy to get bogged down in oh okay so you're just talking about chord scales but it's like not really I'm talking about playing like a sound um, uh, melodically speaking just like uh, like just individual notes one at a time on the whole range of an instrument so like for instance um, like a great way to start is just playing, um, you know, and I think this is something that would apply, like apply to anybody, like it's just playing like, um, you know, all your major scales in 12 keys on the whole range of the instrument, you know? Um, and, that, and so I think that would be a really interesting thing to do as a, as a total beginner. Um, because, you know, you're not, because a lot of the time what, what happens with guitar players is I'm sure you guys all have experienced I certainly have is like you you get to a certain point and you're playing and then you like and then you like look kind of over your shoulder and, and like you see all these like huge potholes that, you know what I mean that you have to go and, and fill and you're like oh fuck how do I do that like um, where do I even start and then it becomes this this work of like you know this this work of going backwards you know so I don't know I think it could be really interesting to kind of I'm so free to you're, 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 you're yeah. exactly yeah all right mm -hmm. so. <laughs> Um, that's really great. So I mean, most people, you know, um, I, I'll try not to bore you, you know, but like, no, but, I, but most people uh, w will play. So before I before I go in, I mean, like, if you just think about the harmony that you're going to be asked to deal with, for the most part, you know, like, if it, and and regardless of style, um, whether it's you know playing like songbook, like American songbook stuff, or playing um, over just really simple rock songs, whatever, um, the harmony that you're going to be dealing with is basically going to be coming from, um, you know, a few places, one being the major scale, right, most obviously. And so um, if you know how the different, how, you know, how the different notes of a major scale are organized into, um, into the different sounds that they can represent, then you know, approaching approaching it as one sound, and then just sort of inversions and permutations of that one sound, um, to me makes a lot more sense than going like Phrygian, Dorian, Mixolydian. You know, um, mm -hmm. because it's really just they're all just um, inversions. You know, it's one sound, and then whatever is on the bottom changes the way in which we hear that sound. Mm -hmm. You know, and so uh, that's the big deciding factor. So. Um, you know, like most people learn, you know, like if you learn to play a major scale in this position, right? Um, and then, or you'll have learned it like this. Um, have you guys all done, I know you certainly have, um, but have you guys all, have you guys done that? Like just play, learned all your major scales in, in all, like, in, one of those sort of from one of those positions or, or another is that familiar to you guys? Yeah. Yeah. Cool. So do you do you sort of work from that three note per string kind of thing? Is that is that is that where you kind of? Yeah, I'm a bass player. So oh, I know how to do <laughs> tell me. Uh, and <laughs> I know how to. Yeah. Well, I, I mean, I can practice. Well, scales. bass players. I mean, bass players practice scales. That's that's your whole your whole life is playing scales. You know. Yeah. 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 So you so that's I mean if you're yeah that's like really. And you can't get boxed in, you know what I mean? Your whole thing is being able to play fluidly. So I would, um, if, we're, if we're just dealing with the key of C, right? Um, are, are you a guitar player? Yeah. Okay. Um, so if you're just dealing with the key of C, like ultimately the goal um, to me is to just sort of be able to know where all the notes of that sound and all, um, are on the guitar, right? And when you think about how you want to break it up, um, you know, if you think about just like dissecting the neck like it's some, like an animal, you know, like you want to be able to address it that way and also diagonally and, and vertically as well, right? Yeah. So 
Um, I like to just like go, okay, so I'm dealing with uh, no sharps and no flats. Yeah. And I want to um, just be able to play all of that on the, on, on the guitar. So rather than sort of thinking like, okay, so this you know, is uh, F Lydian, which I mean, which it is, but rather than thinking about it in that and going, okay, now I'm going to play G Pixel Lydian, um, just sort of thinking about um, the fact that it is, all, it's all, it's both of those things, you know, I mean, this is like, it could be E Phrygian from the, from the 9, you know, or, or this could be just C major starting from the 5th or whatever. It's all, it's all the same stuff, it's just how you arrange it, right? So my goal is to be able to play just in, in, in one kind of long way from the lowest diatonic note of that chord to the highest, um, kind of in, in one motion, right? So I'm going to simple as it sounds, it actually requires like um, some thinking about and some and some organizing, right? Like how am I going to get from point A to point B? Um, so, you know, what, like if we break down the different elements in terms of what's, what that entails, there are like, first of all, it's you, knowing the notes on the guitar uh, is, is really, becomes really important, you know, like just knowing the, um, the note names on all the strings and um, so that would be definitely um, probably the first the first thing and then also um, you know sort of being able to kind of just see all of the smaller positions within the, the, the neck in its entirety right so um, doing that thing and playing three notes a string you know um, uh, or rather thinking about it just in position so I'm just gonna play like if I was just gonna play three notes a string I'm gonna play two octaves and then a four in each in each sort of from each note on the a diatonic note of the C major sound, right? So I would go. zigzagging and just addressing it diagonally, right? I mean, horizontally. Um, the other thing I would want to do is just address it vertically, and so, um, and that will get you co um, comfortable shifting positions as well, right? Um, and so, uh, I would go, okay, cool, so I'm just going to start, like, from the lowest fretted note. sound that I'm actually making too, you know, like what does it sound like when the pick is hitting the string, is it even, um, am I happy with the sound, um, just those kinds of things. Um, and then if I want to address things diagonally, um, a, a, a helpful way to organize it um, is to think about the same way that you can kind of organize playing a horizontal positions, three notes of string, and I like that one just because you are able to kind of cover more chromatic real estate between. Um, notes, um, is to uh, is to play. You can organize it so that you can play um, three notes on your low E string and then your high E string, and then you can play four notes on your um, on every other string. So you would end up going um, like if I was going to play, uh, and that really cleanly puts things in three octaves. So if I was going to play in the key of C from the lowest di fret diatonic fretted note on the guitar, which is F to the highest, then I can go. Um, I'll play three notes, then I'll play four. single um, note in the key signature, right? Mm -hmm. um, and then a book that really 
was really helpful to me um, when I was still studying was um, with, with, uh, with the teacher was the Segovia Scales book, and it's like five bucks, and you can buy it online, and it talks about it's just playing um, uh, major and minor scales in um, uh, in a three octave position, but What's cool about it is, is it, it gets you comfortable shifting positions, right? So, um, for instance, it kind of zigzags in interesting ways. It's not always symmetrical. So the way that he would play a G major scale, for instance, would be like. Is like this. Do you remember those? No. It was like this thing you could like if you had like rich parents, you could you could get get them to buy you this like apparatus that like you hooked your guitar up to, and it would be like you just be like E minor, and then every note in E minor would just light up on the fingerboard. You know what I mean? So you could just be like going from you know from no, from light to light. You know what I mean? And you knew that you were going to be you know playing an awesome solo. So um, <laughs> those keyboards that you can't play piano. Uh, there yeah, right. whole songs where they just the keys light up as you're supposed to press and you play the jingle. That's what oh, I got it. Yeah, right. Yeah, 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 yeah. And so I mean, that's essentially what we're trying to do, but without fret lights, you know. Because <laughs> not everybody can afford fret lights. And, uh, but uh, but uh, you know, so basically, like we just sort of when we when we see a chord or, or hear a sound, we just want the, we just want like the, the in our mind's eye that we just want the instrument like to just light up and just be able to see what's available to you, right? So. Um, that would just be C major, and then I would go through the circle of fifths and do it, you know, um, and I would do every other key, and, and uh, as a warm up, um, you know, just playing from the lowest to the highest, and then down and through the cycle of fifths, doing the same thing. And then, so you going back to like the kind of harmony you're going to be asked to deal with, you'll be dealing with the diatonic harmony that's pulled from that sound. Um, there's uh, there's basically like four sort of overarching kind of parent sounds from which harmony a lot of like popular harmony is going to be pulled, and it's that. It's also a harmonic major, which is just a fancy name for a major scale with, a, with a, 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 the sixth degree has been flattened, so, so it's just, so instead of... So then once you, so for instance, if you just like, um, um, okay, have you, do you, do you, have you played like some C major, some C major scales before and stuff like that in, yeah. in, on the neck, right? Um, so a great place to start would just be, um, because you know, you not only of course to improvise, you need to have like a, a command of the instrument, but you also need to be able to hear, like hear, you know, the things that you're being asked to improvise over and what those sounds are. So. Um, once you, for instance, if you once you learn playing, uh, you know, <coughs> over, uh, like once you learn like one sound, you know, start just start just kind of like hearing what the different roots of that sound make like sound like and kind of how they affect what you're hearing. You mm -hmm. know what I mean? And just what the diatonic harmony sounds like. So that's really simple too. But it, but it's a great way to like 
just kind of hear the different things. Like, what you know, like if we just played like, um, if I'm just thinking like, I don't know, play, uh, you know, just play some different, some different kind of moves. Well, let's just play like a, like like an E, like just like a bat, like an E minor bat. You know, so this is probably where you want to do this. Like, I would just be okay, cool. So I want to play no C major. Now I want to learn what like what a you know what what like um, what like you know e, what what that K signature with no sharps and no flat sounds like with E in the bass. That's which is a note from that you know thing. Okay, so I'm gonna get a different kind of sound. So if we play um, just like a like kind of an E five. E okay. <laughs>
and then I would just kind of like pluck that out and then just do that, but just with that chord, you know. And then the next time I would find another kind of chord that would be hard for me, um, I would do the same thing. And then, um, and then once I felt like I had a sense of how those chords would, would, um, you know, uh, would would be um, would interact with each other, I would. Or once I had a sense of like, okay, I, I know how this chord sounds and what it feels like to play it and what it feels like to sort of resolve to certain sounds within that chord, I would take two two chords, you know, I would then take the chord like that would come before it and then would come after it and then and then just practice that little bite, like taking just little bites at a time, you know, um, to put it together um, over time, you know, to put it together in your, in your broader, broader piece, you know. Is that is that a way that you've practiced as well? Definitely, I think like the, uh, the advice about, I mean, that you said about Taking the scales all the way through the neck, and to me that that was like a big moment, you know. I mean, because you say it's it's just scales, mm -hmm. but it's kind of like you know, take my word for it. The the feeling you get after doing that, it's like oh, okay, now I know the neck, like I'm I'm friends with the neck, mm -hmm. you know. So then, so then all of the other stuff like the you know the confusing terms like sharp seven, sharp eleven. something you have to come to terms with, the fact that it's a ridiculous instrument. Yeah. Yeah. Make yeah. it make it work. <laughs> yeah. 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 It's a really weird one, man. And each each one sounds so different as well. Yeah. Each scene. Yeah, that's another thing too, yeah. I know. It's strange that the guitar ended up being such a commonplace instrument you know, around campfires and all these places went if you actually look at how it's laid out, it's technically speaking one of the hardest instruments to to, to get around. Yeah, it should have been bass. There's only four strings. <laughs> <laughs> I never just sing songs with bass. <laughs> yeah, it's super bizarre. And then also, like you know, um, if you're not not just um, you know if you if you don't want to play sort of like maybe necessarily if like in that kind of style like in like a you know like jazzish kind of linear style like even just um, um, you know if you're playing if you're playing like more pentatonic based stuff like all those things have have positions you know two or, or different places that you can play them to you know and so just even doing that and making that bigger connection as a, as like uh, you know in your in early days of, of like learning you know mm -hmm. is really helpful too so like if you're like okay cool like so someone's like all right we're gonna play a, an A minor you know too and then you're like all right cool I got it and you're like I got it all that you know what I mean but if you're like uh, you know if I were trying to just get more open, uh, you know, like I would just think about, I would approach it the same way. Okay, so I'm gonna play C, I'm gonna play C major from every diatonic note from C major. Okay, now I'm gonna play, if I wanna just really get inside a, a pentatonic, you know, or a C major pentatonic, you know, because they, with the relative major and minor, like, all right, I'm just gonna do the same thing. So what's the lowest, you know, um, what's the lowest note that I can play in A minor pentatonic on the neck that's fretted? It's a G, right? Or something like that, you know what I mean? It's like things just kind of collapse. 
But, um, uh, you know, it sounds really stupid, but I, I would even just used to just like um, just say notes as I would play them, you know, mm -hmm. and but not always play chromatically, not necessarily just be like F, 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 G, you know, but yeah, but just kind of be like, I mean, it's so silly, but you know, just play G, A flat, E flat, G flat, D flat, E, C sharp, F sharp, D, E flat, E flat, A flat, C sharp, you know what I mean? And just kind of like, and just sort of like no, get it to the point where I'm not even thinking about it. Like it's just, it's just, I, that's not something I have to. That's not like an additional piece of like computing that yeah. my brain has to do, yeah. you know. Um, with, in addition to all the other shit it has to do, right? Yeah. 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 <laughs> so, yeah, and like the way that I, I, I'm just like, I just think the best way you can kind of approach it is like, um, in my from my own experience, is just like learning things like really that um, like at, at what they are at their core and like what is the essence of this thing that I'm learning, not. Um, and then once you kind of get that, there's all this really interesting vocabulary that you can get into it. Because I mean, of course, every you know, there's all these styles of music that have like a, a beautiful, amazing, long lineage of like of, uh, like a specific kind of dialect, you know. And then, but uh, but they all use this, right? Mm -hmm. And so that's a great place, I think, just to start. And like, and then also, I think you know, in my experience, and, and you know, I'm sure you guys have experienced this as well in some way or another. Like when you're learning. Even if you sort of just dive right into learning a lot of that vocabulary, like which a lot of us do, like there's a lot of guitar players hiding out in college programs all over the all over the world who, you know, who are kind of like, like hiding weaknesses. <laughs> you know what I mean? And like, and 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 take it. And I know, you know, it takes one to know one. And so like, um, you know, get, there's this weird thing where like you're in college and like all your friends who play saxophone and piano and stuff like that can kind of just like absorb and digest information at like a much faster rate than you're able to, and they're just like, oh yeah, okay, cool, and they, and you're like, ah, nah, I just, you know, <laughs> it's not happening, and, uh, and, and the thi the reason it's not happening is because when they decided to start playing saxophone in seventh grade, um, the band teacher said, okay, here's your saxophone, and here's this Mel Bay uh, s book, where, and go home and learn all your major scales, you know, that's the first thing that you do, you know, and yeah, so, yeah, how yeah, and how to and how to read music and what the notes are and the thing, you know, mm -hmm. and so, um, yeah, and so they're just like they they're they're equipped to sort of like learn that but learn different kinds of vocabulary and like learn different different you know dialects and like because they have that fundamental base layer of like of you know what the core ingredients are, you know. So the more you're able to kind of get in touch with those those core elements. Um, all that other stuff, I, I think, will, will be, you know, much, much easier. Um, what do you mean by learning core vocabulary? Oh, oh yeah, I d um, mm -hmm. just uh, learning, learning things like, um, like, like major, like major scales, well, and just like a sound, like, just different, yeah. yeah, because, because regardless of, like, the detailed um, vocabulary uh, that, like, that um, definitely goes into mm -hmm. um, all these different genres, they're all using these, mm -hmm. these, fundamental things to generate that vocabulary. Yeah. Yeah. Is it best to um, start to improvise and speak my own way uh, at, uh, most of the time, or uh, spend a lot of time listening to other guitars and looking at what they are doing? I think you should always, I think you should always do both yeah. at, at the same time. Yeah. I don't think that, I really think that that's, you can get so bogged down, you know, yeah. in like this, in like, Okay, well, you have to, you know, sort of check all these boxes before you can even, you know, before you should even think about trying to, you know, you know, really improvise or doing yeah. something that is fun or personal to you. You know, yeah. I think that they should be something that you do in tandem, and I think that they'll feed each other. You know, like yeah. as you just like give yourself the freedom to experiment and just play, that will keep you interested and you make it continue to make it fun. You know, and and then the more you do that, the more I think. You know, ideally, the more, the more curious you'll become about like other players, and like, wow, I like this guy, and like, he sounds so good. Uh, how, why? You know, and, and then, and then that'll one will kind of feed feed the other. Yeah, yeah. yeah. you gotta make it, you gotta make it fun for yourself. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Also, if you just if you just listen to people that are really good at instruments and try to play like them, you'll just feel like you're, you'll, you won't be able to. Like I know, yeah, from experience. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. So you'll just you'll inevitably get sidetracked, kind of inspired by them, but doing your own version of whatever you're kind of, however you're interpreting that at that time, yeah. sort of like 
literal transcription of every single note they're playing, writing it down, and very slowly learning it every single note by note, which is a very specific way of doing it. If you're just like listening to Stevie Ray Vaughan, you're like, wow, that's awesome. I'm going to try and kind of take that inspiration and run with it. You're doing both. You're absorbing what he's doing, and you're also just being who you are yeah. at that time yeah. with that inspiration. Yeah. You know, I, 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 like another thing um, worth mentioning too is when you practice all those scales, which can be incredibly tedious and monotonous, um, you know, uh, it's great. It, you can just get so much more out of it, you know, if you if you just try to play it like it's Bach or something like that, you know, and yeah. like, like and really think about it, like like like, you know, what what is the what what's the sound I'm making? It's not just you know, sure, it's just a scale, but it's you know, I, I want to make it as beautiful as I possibly can, and like, and and um, and uh, you know, it's sort of like uh, the core idea being that like, you want to work on as many different things at once as you as you can, right? So you can practice scales, but you can also practice, um, you know, you can also practice technique. You know, not just like straight execution of like is the note sounding, but like you know, what what all, like what's the sound? How's the time? I would always do it with a metronome. You know what I mean? Like, is it is it connected and like, you know, there's just a big difference between just kind of being like, you know, in, in ter just in your approach, you know, like in between just being like, you know, like, like just playing kind of sloppy and getting through it, or then trying to like really um, just make music out of it and trying to like really, really connect with it. sort of the same thing about like how we were talking about harmony like and not kind of getting into like oh chord scales and this thing and that thing and like but just thinking about a macro you know and, and uh, yeah and so I, I same applies here like just not going okay I'm going to practice the scales then I'm going to work on my sound and then I'm going to work on my you know yeah. so yeah. does anybody want to play with these guys they're really good man I'm telling you you can play my guitar or <laughs> Yeah, yeah. Come on. Yeah, come on, man, please.
Thank you guys for coming. And okay. Yeah, yeah. Um, yeah. See you next time. Okay. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you. I actually have a transcription prepared of everything you just played. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> the next six hours. <laughs>